Welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we're going to revisit our tic-tac-toe game that we created with Pygame. Someone asked me if there's a way to check to see if there's a winner. So in this video, I'll show you what you have to add to check for a winner in our tic-tac-toe game. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so in tic-tac-toe, there's three ways to win. One of them is filling up a row. Another one is filling up a column. And the last one is to fill up a diagonal. So what our code needs to be able to do is check for those three different cases. In our code, the first thing we have to add is this line right here. So this is a variable that I called board. And it contains a list that has three different lists inside of it. And inside of each smaller list, it contains three zeros. And these stand for all the different tiles on the tic-tac-toe board. So this is the first tile all the way up to the ninth tile. The reason I have zero, that's going to signify that the spot is empty or not chosen yet. What needs to happen next is whenever a player clicks on a tile, it needs to update the board list with either a 1 or a 2, depending on whether the player is a circle or a rectangle. So for example, if the player clicked on the first tile, then it would update this spot right here with either a 1 or a 2, depending on whose turn it is. Okay, to do that, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to scroll down to the section where it checks for a click on the first tile. Then, under the if and the else statement, we're going to add a line of code. Under the if statement, we're going to add this line right here. What this is doing, it's referencing that board variable that we talked about up top. And then it has two sets of numbers, a 0 and a 0. This first number will be one of the smaller lists. The first smaller list will be position 0. The second one is at position 1. And the third one is at position 2. So this is saying in the first smaller list, and then at the first position, we're going to change that to a 1. Okay, so 1 corresponds with circle, and then 2 is going to correspond with rectangle. Okay, so if it's the rectangle's turn, and they click on the first tile, then inside the first smaller list, at the first position, it's going to put a 2. We're going to continue that with the other tiles. So for the second tile, it's inside the first list, at position 2 and it's going to put a 1 there for a circle and a 2 for a rectangle. Inside of tile 3, it's going to look inside the first smaller list and then in the third position and it's going to put a 1 if it's a circle and a 2 if it's a rectangle. Inside the fourth one, we're now looking inside the second smaller list. Inside the first position, it'll either put a 1 or a 2. For the fifth one, we're looking inside the second list, and now the second position, either one or two. For the sixth one, it's going to be in the second list, the third position, and then either one or two. For the seventh one, now we're in the third smaller list, at the first position, either one or two. For the eighth one, it's going to be the third smaller list, at the second position. And then finally, for the ninth one, it's going to be in the third smaller list, inside the third position, and then either one or two. Okay, let's go ahead and run our code and I can show you how this updates. Okay, so I'm just gonna click in some of the tiles. And now I'm gonna close the game. And down here, I'm going to print off the board. So we can see with our board here, it no longer contains all zeros. It has either ones or twos wherever there was a click. Let me show you now for just individual tiles. So for example, if I click on the first tile, and print off the board. Then it shows a 1 in the first position. If I do the first 2, it'll show a 1 and then a 2. And here we see we have a 1 in the first spot and a 2 in the second spot. If we click something in the second row now and print off board, we can see that it updates it in the second list and then whatever position it was on the board. Now that we have a way of keeping track of which tiles are selected, we can try to go through and see if there's a win. Okay, I'm gonna scroll back up. Okay, so I did all the checking inside of a function and this function I just called it win underscore check and then it's taking in a variable called number. And quickly let me scroll back down just to show you what that number is gonna be. So we're gonna run this function with the number one to check to see if a circle one and then we're also going to run the function with the number 2 to see if the rectangle won. Now, looking at the first set of for loops, what this section is checking for 
is checking through all the different rows to see if there's a row that contains all the same shape, or in our case, either all ones or all twos. The first part of it says for row and board, so in this case, it'll be each individual list. And then the next for loop says for tile and row. So it's going through each individual list here and looking at each individual item. And then what we're saying next is if tile, so if a particular object in a list is equal to num, which will either be one or two, we're gonna continue. So for example, if we're checking for a win for the circles, we're checking for all ones in this list right here. So this first one is gonna say if this first position is equal to one, go ahead and continue. So by continuing, it's gonna look at the next item in this list. If that one is also equal to one, it's gonna continue for the next one. And it'll look at this final one right here. And if it does that, if it sees that they're all equal to one and it never broke out of this for loop here, then it's gonna to default to the else statement, which will return true. And I'll explain where that comes into play in just a second. But let's say, for example, it sees a one for the first one. And then when it continues to the second one, it sees a two. Then in that case, the particular tile is no longer equal to one. So it's gonna to go to this else statement, which will break out of the loop. The next set of for loop is checking through the columns to see if there's a win there. So for this one, we're saying for column in range three. So this value right here will be the number zero, one, and two. Next, we're saying for row and board. So this line right here is gonna be each individual list inside the bigger list, just like we saw above. And then we're saying for each individual list, at a certain position, we're checking to see if it's equal to num, which will either be one or two. So it's gonna check this first list at position zero, and then it'll check the next list also at position zero, and finally the third list at position zero, to see if those are all the same, to see if they're all equal to one or all equal to two. After that, column will be equal to one. So now it's gonna go through again, it's gonna check the first list at position one now. And then same for these other lists to see if they're the same. And then column will go to two. So it'll check the first list at position two, the second list at position two, and the third list at position two to see if those are all equal to one or two. Okay, so that's how we're checking through all the different columns to check for a win. Finally, we need to check through the diagonals. This first one here is checking for a diagonal that goes from the upper left to the bottom right. And the second one right here is checking for the diagonal that goes from the upper right hand corner to the bottom left. Just to illustrate this a little bit more, the diagonal going from the upper left to the bottom right will be at position zero, zero. The middle one is at position one, one. And the bottom right is at two, two. So we need to check each of these points to see if they're equal to one or equal to two. And we're doing that by using a for loop. So we're gonna say for tile in range three. So tile is gonna be the numbers zero, one, and two. And then it's gonna reference the board at certain positions to check for that number. For the first time around, tile will be equal to zero. So it's gonna reference the board at zero, zero, just like we have here, and check to see if that's equal to either one or two. Next, tile will be equal to one. So we're gonna reference the board here at position one, one and finally at two, two. Now looking at the last for loop, the diagonal that goes from the upper right to the bottom left, that's gonna be position zero, two. The middle is still one comma one, and then the bottom left is gonna be two comma zero. So for the first part, it goes zero, one, two, just like we had for the previous example, but now it's a little bit different. For the other position, it goes two, one, zero. To accommodate that in the code, the first part of it can stay the same. So tile will be the number zero, one, and two, just like we need. For the other part, we need to count backwards. So we're gonna say two minus whatever value tile is, and that'll give us the two, one, zero that we need. For the first time around, tile will be equal to zero, so two minus zero is two. The second time, tile will be one, so two minus one is one. And finally, on the last time around, tile will be equal to two, so two minus two is zero. So in this first part, we're going zero, one, two, and this part goes two, one, zero. Okay, so that covers the checking part of it. Now there's just a few more things we have to add to get this working. The next thing we're gonna add is under the while run loop, we're going to make another variable. This one I called one, and I set it equal to false in the beginning. And down at the bottom here near pygame.display.update, 
what we're doing is we're saying if and then we're running the function at 1 and also at 2 and this is where above where it says return true so if it does return true then basically what it's saying is if true for the statement here and it'll return true if it finds a win either in the rows the columns or the diagonals and what's going to happen if it finds a win it's going to set the variable 1 equal to true and where that comes into play is up top here and this is above the if statement that says if first dot collide point and what we're going to do is above it we're going to say if one is not equal to true so that means a player hasn't won yet then that's when we're going to run all this code here so what you can do and I'm just going to unindent this region right here so I can show you the process you have to do so I'm just highlighting all the if statements going down to the ninth one so when you're adding this if statement right here you'll just put it above this one right here and then after you have it above it you're going to highlight the region below it all the way down to the ninth one and then press the tab button that way it indents it inside of this if statement right here so what this does it's only going to allow you to click in a spot if a player hasn't won the game yet so let me show you how that looks okay so first we'll check a row win so I'm just going to put all circles in the first row here okay so now this player has won and you can see I can't click in any of the other tiles so what I can do is just reset the game to restart. Next, we're going to check a column win. So we're going to try this column right here. Okay, so this player has won through this column here. And I can't click on any of the other tiles. Next, we'll check one of the diagonals. Okay, so I have a win here and can't click on other tiles. And finally, the last diagonal. Okay, and same thing as before. There are a few more things we have to add, and those are up here. So this is part of the reset process. Whenever the player clicks on the spacebar to reset the game, what we're going to include in this is the variable 1 set back to false. And we're also going to set our board back to all zeros. Okay, and that's all you have to do to update your tic-tac-toe game to check for winners. I'm going to leave a link in the description for the code just in case I forgot something. You can always take a look at it there. Okay, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.